Welcome back. In this video, I am going to introduce you to the Highlight State component. This is an Advanced Framework Core 4.0 tutorial. Highlighting is a feature that appears at various places in the Advanced Framework. For example, most interaction components have a highlight function that is completely independent from their Highlight State component. However, the Highlight State component is likely to be the best place to explain the different highlighting options the Advanced Framework provides since it has no other functions to distract us. The highlight component we cover in this video is a state component, meaning that it encapsulates a state of its actor. As such, it serves the purpose to enable developers to highlight an actor independently of player interaction. In contrast, all highlighting features provided by interaction components only toggle if the player is interacting with the actor already. Let me show you an example. This cushion here is equipped with a select interaction component, which has a highlight feature reacting to the laser of the pawn. The cushion over here is equipped with the highlight state component, and it is highlighted regardless if the pawn interacts with it or not. With that explained, let's have a look at our highlighting options. Besides the possibility for custom highlighting, the Advanced Framework Core provides three built-in highlighting options, post-process highlighting, mesh highlighting, and material function highlighting. Let's have a look at them first. Post-process highlighting provides the actor with a slight colored border. The effect relies on a post-process volume in the level, which luckily is added automatically if you forgot it upon level creation. So you don't have to worry about that. Let's add the highlight component to our actor and set up post-process highlighting. First, we need to take a look at the state of our component. The source info is of no consequence for us right now but the value must be set to true for the component to highlight. If you want to control your highlighting, this is the variable to use. Now, to set up post-process highlighting, we simply need to select post-process as highlight type and choose a color here. Let's also assume we only want to highlight the chair and not the cushion. To ensure that, we need to use, set the use highlight tag boolean to true and add the tag highlight to the mesh of the chair. Now let's try mesh highlighting. For that, we simply need to change the highlight type to mesh. Mesh highlighting works by creating a copy of the mesh at the same place which is equipped with a highlight material specified here. Let's open it shortly. As you can see, it allows you to specify a color and a scale parameter. And if we go up in the hierarchy, we find that the color is applied as emissive color of the material and the scale as well position offset, which allows the material to create a border. Let's experiment with that. First, we need to create another material instance of the mesh highlighting material. Now let's modify the scale from two to say five. The color is automatically adjusted to the color we selected on the highlight component, so it's no use changing it here. Let's add the new material instance on a copy of the actor so we can see the different material instances side by side. Finally, let's have a look at the material function highlighting. First, we need to select the corresponding highlighting type. But for most materials, this is not enough. The material function highlighting option accesses a function on the material of the mesh. And if this function is not included in the material in question, the actor will not be highlighted. Let's have a look at the material of the chair. The function the advanced framework uses for highlighting is called MF Highlight Glow. To enable material function highlighting, we need to enter it to the material of the chair and connect it to the emissive color input. As you have guessed, material function highlighting is not very suited for emissive materials. Here we are. The material function highlighting works. Before we leave material function highlighting, let's have a look at the MF Highlight Glow function itself. As you can see, it incorporates the color set in the highlight component automatically and uses a glow parameter here, for example, to control the highlight. So better leave that parameter alone. Finally, it offers a parameter to modify the intensity of the glow, which is the glow int parameter here. The default value is insanely high, as you can see but we can do something about that. 
Let's create a few material instances and turn it down a bit. Here we are. I just created three material instances of the chair material with different glow in parameters. Now we just need to assign each of them on to the mesh of one of these reactors and have a look. I personally like all three highlighting options I've showed you up until now, but maybe you want to create something more individual? Well, then the custom highlight type must be your choice. Let me quickly show you an example for that. On this actor, I added the highlight component and used the highlight event dispatcher to toggle a particle effect if the highlight type is set to custom. The code is not the most stable, I admit, but it does the trick, as you can see. Finally, here we have all the examples I created together for comparison. I hope you are up to speed now concerning highlighting. For now, bye bye and see you in the next video.